Hello, everyone. I, I am here today to talk about two of my favorite things, diversity and inclusion and open source. And I promise you I'm not just saying that because that's literally my job. Speaking of my job, I'm the Senior Director for Diversity and Inclusion Strategy at GitHub. I remember when I was applying for this job and I was going through my interview process and I was meeting with Erica Bresham. And Erica was telling me how GitHub takes this very holistic approach to diversity and inclusion. She was sharing how it's embedded across the entire strategy, the entire business strategy from its people, which are, is its HR functions, platform, philanthropy, and policy. And so Erica asked me that question that we all know is coming during the interview. She said, Demetrius, why do you want to join GitHub? And so I had just heard about this amazing platform that had then 50 million developers. Now we're at 65 million developers. And in that moment, I said, I want to join GitHub because I want to open source diversity and inclusion. And I have to humbly say that it was a great answer because I'm here. So what does open source and diversity and inclusion mean? To figure that out, I just started talking to so many people across the entire open source ecosystem. Several of you that are in this room right now, but it was so many conversations. And throughout those conversations, there were some things that just kept coming up over and over again. So one of the things was inclusion happens at the community level. You see, when someone comes into open source, those first few interactions they have within communities, it really sets the tone for whether they feel welcome and they say, open source, these are my people. I'm here to stay for life. Or if they have some not so good experiences, so they come in, try to participate, and they say, this isn't for me, and we often lose them for good. The second thing was that maintainers are really the ones, those community leaders, that sets the tone for inclusion. You see, you think about maintainers as being the one that drives those day-to-day -day interactions. It's almost like a manager to a team. It's really there where inclusion happens. But one of the things about it, those maintainers said, we have tons of resources that tell us how to drive inclusion. They were like, we have podcasts, we have checklists, training, events, conferences, you name it. Everybody's throwing something at us to tell us how to drive inclusion. So I said, well, if resources isn't the issue, what's happening? And this is where the conversation started to differ a little bit. The maintainers of small communities say, yes, we have the resources. And we have the influence, meaning we're touching most of our community members, at least on a daily or a weekly basis. But there's a conflict that we have, a competing priority. We don't have the time to focus on it. We know it's critically important, but when you're first starting a community, you're just trying to focus on getting as many contributors to your communities as possible. What they shared was that we need hands on the keyboard. So while we know it's important, we just have to focus on other things at this time. So then I started talking to maintainers of larger communities, and they said, Demetrius, you're right. We have the resources now. We have the bandwidth. But there comes a certain tipping point when your community becomes too large for you to easily influence the culture. So the later you start, the harder it is. So now you have these two tensions, right? You have the people that need to be focusing on in driving inclusion. They need to focus on it at a time when they just don't have the time or the space or the capacity to do it. But one thing that we heard, whether it was from large communities, small communities, well-resourced, under-resourced, they said one thing that we know. There are still some significant barriers to access for people to even get to open source. You see, we can build the most amazing communities possible. They can be so welcoming, but if the gate is too high for people to even get to our communities, what are we really doing here? So we can't fall into that myth of if we build it, they will come. 
we have to help them get there with us. So with all of these themes in mind, we are pleased to announce All In. All In is an open source community whose mission is to advance open source, oh, diversity and inclusion with, in open source by focusing on access, community, equity, and data. But we know that we have to do this open source community openly, transparently, and more importantly, in collaboration with all of you. So here's what we've been up to and what we're committed to doing over the course of the next year. We are launching an open source, we've actually already launched an open source diversity, equity, and inclusion survey. We are embarking on a maintainer's listening tour. And so for those of you that were here yesterday and tuned in yesterday, you heard some of our preliminary findings from that. And we are having an all-in 12-month pilot focusing on students and maintainers. So today I'm going to talk to you about where we are with all three of them. So the Open Source Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Survey, when we started thinking about All In, we realized that we just didn't have a lot of data around DEI across the open source ecosystem. There's been several surveys that have been launched for specific communities, but we really didn't have a good grasp of what was happening on the big picture. So we partnered with the Linux Foundation, and back in July, we launched this survey we had thousands of people who responded, which resulted in a great survey sample of 2,350 completed surveys. So what did we find amongst that survey? Here's one thing that we have to celebrate. Out of the people that responded to this statement, I feel welcome in open source, 82% agreed with that statement. That's good news, right? Something to celebrate. I can tell you there are companies that would be thrilled if they could get 82% agree agreement on their engagement surveys. So many would stop there. But that's not the purpose of diversity and inclusion. That's not what we do. We want to give voice to the 18%, the almost one in five who do not feel welcome in open source. What are their stories? What are their experiences? Because it's those stories and experiences that might be keeping thousands of others from even attempting to join open source. That's where the work really begins to start. That's where we have to begin the conversations. We wanna know what the 25% of people who are with disabilities, how are they feeling? We wanna know the 26% of women who do not feel welcome in open source. What are their stories? What about the 29% of persons of color here in North America and the staggering 38% that identify as non-binary or a third gender? Why are they not feeling welcome in open source? That's where we have to begin the conversation. Here are some of the things that we heard from those that do not feel welcome. A lot of them felt that when they come into a community and if they lack the technical skills and knowledge, especially to contribute to code, they're made to feel inferior. We heard comments that said that if I'm not white, if I'm not male, if I'm not highly educated, if I'm not rich, that they're not wanting me to participate in their communities. We also heard that a lack of response or rejections to contributions, this is something that was really, really bothering people and making them feel unwelcome. They, they said that their contributions were rejected or just flat out ignored. When you ignore someone's contributions or their comments, they said that they feel invisible. It's not about their code at that point. It's just about, can you see me? 46% said that they have experienced some type of language that is making them uncomfortable. So all types of stereotypes or rejections, microaggressions, cultural barriers, they are experiencing these things. So either we're not speaking to them or we're speaking to them in a way that is making them feel uncomfortable we have to start thinking about and addressing these concerns because that's where people are feeling unwelcome. Those are the stories that are getting repeated over and over again in open source. We have to get to a point 
where inclusion is the norm, not the exception. We have to get to a place where things like community hospitality is something that like, the open source community does it so well where you receive an email or some type of notification when you join a community that says, welcome to our community. We see you, we hear you, your contributions are appreciated, your voice is needed. And I have to mention that the open source com source community uses GitHub Actions to do that. We also have to get to the place where tools such as one that Sean Goggins from the chaos community has introduced me to, where it is able to assess the community health across language, where if you're a maintainer or a community leader, you can run a report and in real time, get an understanding of the, the, the conversations that are happening. And it flags potential non-inclusive conversations. So then you can take a deeper dive into it and say, is this something that I need to intervene? Is this something that I need to de-escalate? Those tools have to be in the hands of all maintainers, and we have to make sure that they're not cost prohibitive. In my opinion, they should be free. Inclusion language scans, accessibility audits, enforced codes of conduct, unbiased, tra unbiased training for community leaders. These are the things that have to become the norm. So yeah, we're going to build it. But we're also going to make sure that we're addressing those barriers and those things that are making our communities not inclusive as well so that they will come. So again, I mentioned the maintainers listening tour. If you didn't see it yesterday, definitely check out the recording. But this is a series of individual interviews, focus groups, and online feedback that anyone can go onto our website and give us feedback if you're not able to make the interview or the focus group. Check out your agenda because later today we're actually going to be hosting a maintainers listening to our focus group here as part of this conference as well. We are going to make sure that we take that feedback from the maintainers listening tour and we are going to launch a 12 month pilot called All In for Maintainers. We're waiting to finalize that program design because we want to build that program with maintainers, not for maintainers. That's what open source community means. We do it in collaboration with the folks that we are really, really trying to help and to engage. We need that partnership. So I'll spend the rest of my time talking about this other 12 month pilot that we've launched two months ago, all in for students. And I can tell you all the students that are a part of this program are freaking amazing, amazing, amazing. These are students that attend historically black colleges and universities, as well as a school that is right here in North Carolina that was founded for the education of the native and indigenous population. And so what these students are undergoing is this semester, they're receiving open source education, which is open source 101 that was generously provided by the Linux Foundation, and they're receiving professional development curriculum. They're learning things like resume writing, interviewing skills, but also those things that will help them really just hit the ground running when they join a tech company or when they join an open source community. Things around how to, you know, understand your personal story and sell your personal story. The power of collaborations. What do you do when you are the only one? How do you make sure you're giving great feedback and receiving great feedback? How to deal with microaggressions and stereotypes? How to make sure you can find an ally and identify an ally and how you can even be a better ally? These are the things that we're talking to them about in that professional development education. And then next semester, they will be undergoing a 12 week project, either with a corporate partner or an open source community. And we're doing that in partnership with Major League Hacking, MLH. So the students will be getting real time experience. The whole goal of this program is that with that open source education and that technical experience, these students will be prepared for summer internships at some of our corporate partners. 
we were very, very intentional about the schools that we selected for this program. We went to the schools that often do not show up on any company or any company's radar. We were also very intentional about the students that were selected to participate in this, in this um, program. We wanted the students who are hardworking, who are dedicated, but life happens. The students in these programs, some of them commute two hours every day back and forth to school because they can't afford to live on campus. Several of them are caregivers, especially during this pandemic. We have parents that are in this program. We also have students who are athletes, who are working full time. They're on full time scholarship. They are active duty military or military reserves. These are students that have other responsibilities in which their GPA may not be an indicator of their aptitude for success. We wanted to go all in on those students, those students that if you just open the door just a little bit for them, we know that they have the ability to succeed. And one of the things that I like to say that I'm proud of with All In, we've wrapped them into community. We have some amazing organizations who are supporting this program. We have the universities, we have the companies, which are GitHub, Red Hat, Microsoft, Fidelity, Cisco, Intel. They said we are all in for these students. Organizations like the Chaos Project, the Linux Foundation, Major League Hacking, All Things Open, Todd generously provided every student free access to be able to attend this conference. This is what open source and diversity and inclusion looks like. And I have to tell you, I asked the GitHub amazing design team, I said, do we have room for more logos? They said, we have tons of room. So I can't wait to come back here next year and talk to you all and have a lot more logos as well as names of each and every one of you who are going to join us in this community. But let me be very, very clear. All In is not a program. It's not a set of programs. It's not initiatives. All In is a community. And a community is made up of people who are dedicated, who are willing to provide their resources, their thought leadership, their empathy, their compassion. It's made up of people like all of you and we need you. Remember when I talked to you earlier about maintainers and what they said when they are first starting a community, they need hands on the keyboard? Well, we need hands on the keyboard. So please, please, please join us. Here's how you can join the community. Go to our website. It's a landing page right now, full website. It's coming in about a week. Allinopensource.org. Join the community. Attend a maintainer's focus group or a listening tour or fill out the async form that's up there. Become a corporate partner. If you know that your company would love to participate in a program like All In for Students, we want to hear from you. We want the introductions. We are taking all meetings and contribute where it counts in whatever way that is useful for you. So with that, I want you all to really hear the invitation to join us on this journey. Let's get to work, you all. Let's open source diversity and inclusion. Thank you.